A new station has been added to the game, and that is Cog Station. Cog has a pretty interesting layout. You have service and stuff towards the north of the station. North of the station is arrival, so you basically arrive and will walk straight down into the service area. East of service has a pretty interesting botany. Uh, the botany is actually quite massive. have a ton of spaced out hydro trays, which typically botanists aren't that big of a fan of, but it does look nice. You even have like an animal husbandry room, which is unique. Uh, almost in the center of the station, not quite. It's off to the southeast is the singularity. To the west of the singularity is the AI course. Whenever the AI gets added, uh, I see that getting eaten quite a lot. To the east is probably one of the most interesting Atmos designs I've seen. There is no way to access Atmos from engineering without going into space. And if you want to access engineer, if you want to access Atmos without going through space, you have to go through this like torture chamber maintenance room in order to get through the maintenance door into Atmos. I, I Atmos is basically like in a dungeon. The captain's bedroom, extremely easy to break into. There's an all access card just sitting right there behind one window. Uh, so it's a very vulnerable bridge. There's, again, just one reinforced window separating all of the bridge from getting spaced. There is these little fire locks here to prevent the back of the bridge getting spaced. But without focusing too much more on the detail, uh, the head of security's room is also attached to the bridge, which is actually pretty unique. I feel like this is also a pretty unique design. The head of security's room connects to the front of the bridge, and it directly connects to security, which is attached to the bridge, which typically securities that are attached to the bridge uh, are pretty well defended. The armory is also different. You have the suit armory, which is exposed to space, so that can be destroyed pretty easily. And then you have the main armory, which features triple walls, and in some places, like like this, which I thought was like a mapping sin, but without exposing too much of my opinion, uh, that is pretty much it. There's also round start enforcers, several bulletproof vests, and just to peel this band-aid off early while we're still talking about stations and maps, Atlas has been removed, Saltern has been removed, Cluster has been removed, and Origin have been removed. Also removed was Europa, but Europa was not playable without admin intervention. And Train has also been temporarily removed again for uh, design layout changes or something like that. So yeah, basically one person maintains pretty much all the maps, and we have a lot of maps in this game, and that is a lot of work for a volunteer to deal with. They had a security energy shotgun has been added to the game. It is an incredibly powerful shotgun that can swap between lethal and non-lethal shots. It is self-recharging, has the fire rate of a normal shotgun, and even has the same amount of ammo as an enforcer, probably making this the best gun in the game at the moment. You do have to wield it to shoot it, and then once it's wielded, you press E to safe go between the modes. There's wide laser barrage, narrow laser barrage, and disabling barrage. Disabling barrage shoots out three pellets. That does 45 stamina damage total if all three pellets land, meaning it will stun in three shots. There is wide laser barrage, which if we shoot it across the room, you'll see it's five pellets that fans out by quite a lot. If you point blank somebody with the wide barrage, it does 65 damage, meaning you can two shot somebody with it if they do not have armor. And then you have narrow laser barrage, which is four pellets that has a very tight spread, basically enough to guarantee hit anyone in the hallway. And then if you point blank somebody with the narrow laser barrage, that does 58 damage, making this weapon extraordinarily deadly. And as we have seen with the current infinite ammo weapons, namely the antique laser pistol, that one person with this kiting through space or something could basically kill the entire station with enough patience. So this does give the head of security a way to fight back if one of those weapons is stolen. But this is a syndicate objective now, and it has replaced the emergency orders which have been removed from the game. So syndicates are going to be tasked with stealing this, and then they're going to have the ability to basically fight the entire station in a war of attrition, which... There is no attrition if you have infinite ammo. Shock collars and electro packs have been added to the game. They both kind of serve the same purpose. They are meant to be put on dangerous criminals to shock them in place and make it so that if you're near them, they can't remove it on their own and you can just stun them. So the shock collar is in the warden's uh, locker by default. They get two of them. And then the electro pack is a research. Both cannot be removed with outside help. Uh, the shock collar is going to get removed. <laughs> Without going too far into details, uh, it's not being used for what a shock collar was intended to be used for. It takes quite a long time to put it on someone, so you can't really, like, you'd have to have them cuffed and already subdued in the first place. You can't just, like, slip this on them. Funnily enough, though, uh, I believe you can just put it in somebody's pocket or hands to stun them, but at that point, that's not exactly what it was intended for. So all you do is hook it up with a multi-tool and or in a remote signaler and you could just press E and you'll instantly shock them and you could basically just perma stun somebody with this. There's a tiny bit of reaction time they can get but there's no real way you can fight back against this. 
Again, I expect the shot caller to get removed probably within a few days. I'd be surprised if it doesn't get removed. The Electro Pack will most likely stay. A new type of Gap Fruit mutation called Cap Fruit has been added. One Cap Fruit has a fake Cap Gun in it, meaning that it has real bullets, and one has just a real Cap Gun in it, meaning that it doesn't have real bullets in it. So, this will definitely keep people on their toes if you see it. You don't know if you're about to get mag dumped by a real bullet or get hit by a Cap Gun. I am sure this is going to cause some heavy chaos. Botanists can now grow tea plants, which can make tea leaves, and you can dry those to make different types of tea drinks. A new reagent has been added to the game. It is named Sedin, or Sedin, not entirely sure, maybe Sedin. But what it does is it basically hurts a plant and its potency, but it has a RNG gambling chance to restore the seeds of a plant. So if you mutate a plant or add, make a plant so potent that it loses its seeds, you can use this to potentially make super plants. So for all the aspiring botanists out there who like making super plants, this stuff might be very helpful for out increasing your output. Chefs can now acquire metal pitchers. They have 60 units, and this lets chefs serve some more minor drinks themselves. Custom kebabs and tacos are here. So just very quickly, this is a meat kebab that has four pieces of meat. You can swap them out with other ingredients. And then this is a taco that I just threw a bunch of cheese wedges into. Uh, there's not really any better alternative for cheese other than an entire cheese wedge. But you get the point. Chefs eating good again. The Syndicate Combat Bakery Kit has been added for chefs to purchase. Inside there is a Sword Baguette that does 16 slash of damage and two Throwing Croissants at uh, 2 5 slash and 10 Pierce when thrown. Uh, the Baguette's actually not a bad weapon. And just to segue into this, if you might have noticed, when you examine items now, it will specifically tell you if it's contraband or not in accordance with space law and also for things like command items whether or not you should have them probably want to avoid visibly carrying this around without a good reason. The random sentience event has been returned, and it has been specifically fixed as well to only actually include things on station, so there should be more specific machines for people to take over just for a minute. Hard to visually show this one, so I will just say what happened. Events have been changed around and new game modes and quotations have been added. Cargo gift events are less common and shuttle events are less common. Uh, these were always spammed out because there was like a dozen of each, so they would basically overweigh the other events. Uh, meteors have been changed to be a bit more responsive to player count, meaning that there should be less meteors at lower player count and less deadly meteors, if I understand this correctly. There's also Kessler Syndrome, which is a new game mode, but it's basically just uh, like meteors forever, as far as I'm aware, and it's still survival, but it's just all meteors all the time. And then there's Zombie Meteors, which is all meteors, and then there's like Initial Infected. Uh, there are rare chances, uh, definitely very chaotic. I've seen both of them, and both of them I just felt like I was just getting slaughtered. But other than that, uh, new game modes and the more spammable common events are less common and spammed. Detectives now have external access by default, and they can also access cryo units just like the normal security officers can, which can help them with their detective work. You can now turn the suit sensors off of an incapacitated person directly by opening up their strip menu with E, right clicking their suit sensor, and then turning it off. The PAX reagent has been changed. Before, if you just down like 30 units of it, you'd basically lose combat mode for like an hour. Now the way it works is that drinking PAX will, or getting injected with PAX, will just keep refreshing the duration of it, so it doesn't stack quite as long, but it's still effective in high dosages. Either way, PAX still does the same thing, basically makes it so people can't use harm mode while they have it in their system is the gist of it. Upon ingesting Flog, you will now actually ignite, making it a bit more deadly. There are new keybinds for rotating objects and flipping them. R and Shift R will rotate clockwise or counterclockwise, and F will flip the object. This is really nice if you're just trying to rotate chairs or something and don't want to have to deal with the right-click menu. It's also good for things like setting up the uh, singularity because you have to get those uh, computers and stuff in the right position. The golden toilet has been added to the game, and I believe is supposed to be assigned to the captain's bathroom. And for gameplay purposes, thieves may have a chance to have to steal this uh, toilet, so could cause some interesting drama looking for a golden toilet. Space dragons, upon devouring dead people or crit people, will actually heal some of their bleeding, and it heals it entirely. So if you are actively fighting somebody who's cutting up as a dragon, make sure you eat them because that will staunch your uh, bleeding immediately and prevent you from bleeding out. Recyclers have received some changes. They cannot be broken down or repaired. The material reclaimer was removed in general, just I'm kind of lumping this all together. And the material reclaiming efficiency has been increased as well. So the material reclaimer has kind of been buffed and merged into the recycler. Uh, so yeah, the recycler can be broken now. It's pretty damn durable. I'm using a 200 damage weapon. So it took around probably 500 damage to break it. It can be repaired at this point. And that means that breaking the recycler actually removes the EMAG effect. So there may be a reason you do want to have to break this and repair it. Either way, 
uh, with the increased efficiency of recycling things, expect to look in the uh, like disposals rooms and see maybe some more materials and stuff lying around. Also, if it's emagged, you could save a more unfortunate crew from meeting a horrible end by destroying it. Salvage Rex will no longer tell you what the wreck is, it only tells you the size of it. Ore balance has been shifted around. There is now less ore on the giant mining asteroid and on expeditions, however, uh, magnet asteroids specifically have had the amount of ore on them increased. They now also correctly report what ore is on them so you can go and look for those specific ores. The way you process ores has also been changed. Ore is now only processed one at a time and you can change the amount that is processed at the bottom here. So you do have to mine more in general than you did before to get more materials. That segues into part two of this is that material prices and such have been changed. So to sum up the material changes, sell prices on most materials have been increased. The price of ordering materials has been increased. This includes things like plast steel, plastic, uh, glass steel. And the amount of plasma you get from a plasma crate has been changed from three stacks to one stacks. And we're not quite done. Diamonds, refined diamonds, have had their price increase to be 2,000 spesos per diamond. Uh, ore bags of holding have been moved to tier two industrial. Standing mining drills now attack fast and break rocks in two hits. There's also diamond tip drills, which you can make with these diamonds, but they must first be researched under tier two industrial. So again, more changes for material balancing. Diamonds make a lot of money and they can even make tool upgrades if science is cooperating with you. And we're still not done. There are now shark minnow teeth and space carp teeth as a way to butcher your carp and minnows to, as a way of collecting a bounty. And there are literal bounties for these teeth now to make even more money off of. So killing mobs, these specific mobs as of right now, is more lucrative for making money to maybe have to mine less to buy the materials or buy other things that the station needs. And the last thing I will cover for this week is the Goliath mob is here. A Space Station 13 mob has made its way into the game, and it is a mob that does not just hold W on you and melee you to death. It tries to stun you first with its tentacle and a range attack, so if you run away from it, it will try to hit you with these tentacles, meaning you have to use effective spacing. You can see it trying to go for the tentacle attack. When it can't, it tries to go for a solid like melee. Uh, it's a pretty complex mob compared to what's already in the game. You definitely want to range this to death. Trying to melee it is wrong. It will kill you very quickly. Anyways, there was a ton of content and stuff this week. I try to go through it a little bit quicker when there's this much stuff, but I still think I explained everything relatively well. But uh, anyways, thank you guys for watching, and make sure to give our maintainers and contributors a huge thanks for all their hard work. A ton of great stuff this week. You'd love to see it.